So warm up number eight, uh, complete the uh, relative frequency table. Here's your table. What kind of table is this? It's a two-way relative frequency, and there's your question to answer. Make sure you uh, fill that in expeditiously. Damn, big words, right? All right. Um, also, the agenda, here it is, warm-up number eight. We're focusing on dot plots today, and I'm softly and smoothly uh, uh, introducing standard deviation. Tonight's home plays only two problems. Uh, your Nearpod code, if you want to follow along on the video or by yourself, uh, it's QDB7C. Make sure you copy that. Uh, last night's home play, make sure you turn it in on Canvas. I'm pretty sure you, some of you already did since yesterday. Uh, tonight's home play is those two problems, so uh, make sure you get those done and uh, be ready because tomorrow's Thursday and then we have Friday coming up. Wee! Let's go from the corner. All right, so with that said, our objective for today, I can represent data on dot plots and compute the standard deviation. Today's Freyer model is going to be on dot plots, dot plots. The other main concept, which is standard deviation, like I mentioned, I'm going to slowly introduce a couple of components today just so that you're not here. This is well, you're not over here. Yes? All right. So with that said, what are we doing with dot plots? We're representing data using dot plots. And for standard deviation, what are we doing? We're computing. Okay? So on your prayer model, dot plot, definition. Dot plot is a data representation that uses a number line and X dots or other symbols to show frequency. Other symbols, you can replace that. And instead of symbols, you can replace that with icons since you guys are used to icons or, you know, emojis or whatever. Once again, what is a dot plot? Is a data representation that uses a what? A number line, only a number line. And we use X's, dots, or other symbols to show frequency. Example, here's a number line that is representing what? Salary in thousands of dollars. And what did they use to represent the data or the frequency? They used X's. What else can we use instead of X's? Dot, that's why they call it dot plot. What else can we use? Pokemon, yes. Stars, yes. Check marks, yes. Uh, a happy face for all those, for each of those uh, frequencies, yes. But once again, according to the definition, it's using a what? A number line. Do you see a number line? Yes. Do you see X's, dots, or other symbols to show frequency? Yes. Very simple, straightforward, yes? All right. So, students, dot plots, dot plot students. Here's another example. Look up before you copy it. Tell your neighbor why this one is not a dot plot. Why is this one not a dot plot? All right. Looks like Alice got it. Very good, Alice. Uh, Ayalani got it. Eric got it. What do you think, Eric? Why is this one not a dot plot? It's a graph or a coordinate. This one has coordinates. This one is only one number line. This one has an X and a Y. That's why it's a coordinate. That's why this is not a dot plot. So, for the sake of time, here's some hashtags. What makes a dot plot a dot plot? Hashtag only a number line, one number line. Hashtag shows frequency. Yes, it does show frequency. Hashtag uses X dots symbols. All right, we good? All right. So, your fair model should look like that. So, for this next problem that I'm going to give you, don't copy it. We're going to do this one together on the screen. Okay? Here it goes. 
Example 1A. This one should be on your screen. Now check this out before you start touching the screen or doing anything. Writing pencils down, look up to the screen. Here it goes. It reads, example 1A. And by the way, this is almost uh, to the T true. An ice cream truck offers items at five different prices. Mr. Q counted how many items were offered at each price one day. Do you guys think I would do that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Believe it or not, sometimes when I go to, into places like uh, whichever, like an uh, office or building, uh, the first thing I notice is the exits, how many doors. From there, I start counting the lights, pictures, how many squares, and anyway. That's just my brain doing all the work. You're like, what? <laughs> Anyways, here we go. It says, uh, I counted all the items, and it says, make a dot plot of each data. So, look at the prices, one all the way to three. So, I'm going to start with one. So, label this one one on the screen. You can write on your screen, please. Let's do this one together. On your screen. Oh, with your neighbor if you don't have your screen. All right, so I label this one, check this out. Since we're dealing with decimals, I'm gonna go with counting nine tallies and then go to the next number. So I'm gonna go, here's one, and then I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the very next one is number two, or two dollars. From there, I'm gonna count nine again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the next one is Three. Next, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the next one is four. And of course, this is in dollars. Yes? All right. So I'm going to use blue, me. You can use whatever color you want. Change it right there. And I'm going to use my own icon to represent the frequency. You choose your own. So I'm going to start with the dollar. How many uh, items? Five. So I'm going to write, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I use stars. You use whatever you want on your screen. Dollar fifty. How many items? Three. So I go one, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. And I do one, two, three. Next item. This one's done. Two dollar item. How many of them? Six. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Two dollar and fifty. That's four items. So I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Four items. One, two, three, four. And last but not least, three dollar item. How many of them? Two. One, and of course, you're using your own icons. However, that's good and all, but look at your data already represented there as a dot plot. What can you conclude according to this data? What would you write as a statement? So get your text tool, type me a response there. What can you conclude from that data? And once again, read the uh, context. The context is an ice cream truck offers items at five different prices. All right, tell your neighbor what you can conclude. So like that, we can get somebody to give us a statement. All right, statement, Emilio. Okay, uh, elaborate a little bit more, because if somebody just reads number two is the greatest, they're going to think that maybe if they're talking about LeBron, Oh, 
more items are available available at two dollars ten q hands if you agree with that observation yeah pretty straightforward yes all right so press send please then i'm gonna show you what i see so from one divide, look up the value with one, I mean with dot plots, dot plots. Yeah, we got this, yes? All right. So you already uh, did one like this. You're going to do the next one. Copy this next one on your paper so you at least have an example. Example 1B. Copy that on paper, please. And it, and it reads, the cafeteria offers items at seven different prices. Mr. Apodaca counted how many items were offered at each price one day. Make a dot plot of the data. Here's the data given. There's your number line. Write a conclusion. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right, so I think uh, that pretty much seals it, yes? From one to five, how comfortable are you with dot plots? Yes, so like I said, throughout the year, I'm going to be adding different type of representations. We started with box plots. We went to dot plots. We're going to be moving uh, to, oh, we did best fit lines. We're going to be moving to histograms, bar graphs, pie graphs. There's a bunch of graphs that we're going to be using, but like I said, slowly but surely, yes? But please, pretty please do your practice. My goodness. Well, I'm going to start sending uh, Brianna to slap people around. All right. This next part, like I said, is one of the concepts that give uh, people a hard time. But, like I said, I'm only going to give you a portion today, so like that it's easy to transfer. That's why I gave you plenty of practice of the other things that we did. So copy this problem on your paper, please. Example number two, two eight. It reads, find the mean, median, mode range and standard deviation of 3, 5, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, and copy that table. I'll give you one minute to copy. Go. Yeah, I'll, I'll elaborate on that. All right. Yeah. So, example two reads, find the mean, median range, and um, median, mean, median, mode, and range, and standard deviation of that data. Now, for the sake of time, um, for this exercise, do we know how to find mean, median, mode, and range? Yes. So, I'm going to focus on standard deviation. Now, what is the first word on standard deviation? The letter what? S. Well, guess what? This symbol right here, look up. It's a Greek symbol for the letter S for standard deviation. Okay? So, um, so what do we do? We are given a data. There it is. Tell you never the very first thing that your muscle memory tells you to do with that data. Yeah, ascending order. But in this case, look up. Instead of writing it like this, now I'm going to write it here on my table. What would be the first number? One. And then? Two, two, three, four, four, five. You're like, oh, I see what you're doing, Q. Oh, yeah, I'm creating muscle memory that applies to everything we do. So, now that we have that, Check this out. The next step, look what the next column says. Deviation from mean. Writing utensils down, look up to, uh, to the screen. You're like, what does deviation mean, Mr. Q? It's kind of like this. Um, let's say there's a particular pattern that is most common for whatever it is. Let's say... Uh, Let's say for the first home play that I gave you guys scores, I saw that the, mo the, the most common score was at least 90%. Yes? Is that the most common? Okay. When people deviate from that, that means that they are either lower or higher. That's what deviation means. That means that you're not at standard. You're a little bit off. 
So with data, same thing. Whenever somebody gives you data, you first need to find out what is that number. That number that we usually use is called the mean. Look what it says here. Deviation from mean. Do we know how to find the mean of this data? Yes, yeah, so underneath that, I want you to put the X with the bar in blue. We're going to use that symbol for the mean. Tell your neighbor uh, how to find the mean of that data, please, so that you can remember how to find the mean of that data. All right, enlighten us, please, Angel. How do we find the mean? Add all of them and then and divide by how many you have. So let's see. Let's add this. We got 1 plus 2 plus 2, that's 5, plus 3, that's 8, plus 4, that's 12, plus 4, that's 16, plus 5, that's 21. And we're going to divide by how many numbers? 7. So my mean is 3. Okay. So we're going to follow this formula. What does this formula say? X. What is X? The data value. X minus what? The mean. So that means I'm going to write all of these again on the next column. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. And I'm going to subtract from all the data the mean, which is 3. That's going to give us a number. All right, let's see. What is 1 minus 3? Negative 2. 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. Negative 1, 0, 1, 1, and 2. You're like, hey, really, this gives people problems? Yes. I don't know why. Because the next step is where it gets people like, why are we doing it again? So watch. What does this say? Squared deviation. That means we take the data minus the mean. What did we get for this? All these numbers, yes? So we take negative 2, square it, negative 1, square it, negative 1, square it, 0, square it. Write it out, please, even though it's still 0, but so you can create that muscle memory, please. Square it and 2, square it. All right, bless you. So 2 squared, I mean negative 2 squared is 4, then we got 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 4. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to find, check this out, what is that? What is this, guys? A mean, but from the squared deviation. So find the mean for all this again. And for this one, you're going to label this. Look up. A black mean like this, but you're going to go the symbol for deviation, but you're going to put a squared to it. Squared to it. So, 4 plus 2, plus, I mean, 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4, that is what? 12 divided by 7, and that gives us approximately 1.71. So, let's go through the process one more time. I gave you data. You set it in order. You find the mean. Take the data, subtract the mean from it. From there, you take that result, square each one of them, and find the mean once more. That is the squared deviation over there. That's not the standard deviation. This is the squared deviation. 
So to find the standard deviation, that means without the square, how do we get rid of this square? Tell your neighbor, please. Square root, yes? So take the square root of 1.71, and that's going to be our standard deviation. Now, for those of you that don't have uh, your calculators, remember you can open up a new browser and type in calculator.net. Go to square root of 1.71. That gives me 1.307, which is 1.31. Yes? All right, so we write in here our standard deviation is 1.31. Students, standard deviation, standard deviation, students. Yes? Yeah, it's approximation. That's why we have approximately. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with standard deviation? Yeah? 5 4, 5 4. A good transition, yes? I still haven't showed you the whole package, but at least I'm, I'm getting into there little by little. Yes? We'll stop right there. Now check this out. Look at the home plate for tonight. Is that doable? Standard deviation, mean, medium, mode, range, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. We'll stop right there. Make sure uh, you get that done. And once again, those of you that are falling behind, please do not fall behind. I'll stop the recording right there. Have a good one, everyone. Enjoy your home place. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.